Hello everybody, my name is Avery, and today we're going to be taking a dive into Go, um, along with a few other libraries, for creating the game Wordle. If you guys don't know, uh, this right here is Wordle. It is a game where you try to guess a word based on, you just give it random words and it tells you which letters are correct, and from there you keep going. This is the website for New York Times, and um, let me just call it right here. So. This means that these letters, L and O, they're grayed out. That means that they're not part of it. H and E, that means they're going to be in the word, but that means they're in the wrong position. And you have a five letter word, that's how it always is, and it's going to be six guesses to get to that word. So we're going to be recreating this today. And right here is the recreation, this so is one of the versions. And as you can see, this is a test of it. Um, there is a random word from a dictionary that it pulls every single time. It also checks to make sure your word is a word as well. You can't just pass in some garbage or just be checking letters. But this is what we're going to be doing. Um, I have the dictionary right here. It's just a list of all these five letter words. And then here is another application. It's the exact same thing. And here it is. And that's basically what we're going to be creating. We're creating this first. And then we're going to make it so you can view it on a website as well. So today the tools we're going to be needing is going to be first off the language Go. Um, it's not, I guess it's not a tool, but it's a language. So if you guys aren't familiar with it, I'll have the link in the description. This is where you can get it. Uh, Go runs on everything, basically. I'm running it on Linux. There's the installs for it right here. Uh, there, you might want to look up specifically on how to set it up if you don't have it set up already. I know if you're using the app repository, if you're using... Uh, I guess most Linux and whatnot use it, at least Debian and what, everything similar to that uses apt, but your own repository should have it as well, but I believe it's just going to be, oh, my bad, install go lang, I believe it's just like this, oh, I guess we can look. Oh, yeah, it's going to be too many results. Uh, might just be like that. Okay, so here's some things. Um, but you just want to want to install it if you don't have it installed already. It's pretty simple to get. I mean, you can even get on the website right here. But I would say it's best to look up tutorial for each of your operating systems um, to get it installed. Once again, we're using Go. And then we're using this Ebiton, a dead simple 2D game library for Go. I covered and showcased this a few days ago, or maybe it's been a week or so. Um, this library is one of the biggest, most popular libraries out for the Go language for creating um, GUI and game related stuff. Uh, so we're going to be using this. To get Ebiton, we can just use Go for the most part. It has commands for installing all the libraries. But here is the repository for it on GitHub. And so everything we're doing is going to be linked to this repository. Uh, well, it's going to be pulling it from this repository, I mean. Um, there's documentations for everything. You can see the website. There's documentations uh, on how to use everything. There's sample codes. Um, we're not going to be using too many features because Wordle itself is a really simple game. It doesn't take too much. And I'm not an expert on this, so we're going to be kind of uh, doing some things that there might be backhanded, possibly. Like, there might be a better way of doing it. But uh, either way, it's going to work. You can even see example for 2048. That's... It's not the same thing as Wordle at all, but it's uh, it's kind of similar. It's a grid-based game. So there's example, examples of that, along with a, a lot of other things. And this is going to be Ebiton. I'll pull this over right here. And close this. So there's some text editors you can try if you don't already have one. There's Sublime Text. It's pretty simple. It's basically just a simple text editor. It has some syntax and coloring for stuff, um, along with a few other features. And then there's... Atom, it's basically the same thing. I believe Atom's being made by GitHub, but it's, uh, I guess, the hackable text editor. It's the text editor where you can install extra things and add on to it. And the same thing with Visual Studio Code. It's pretty similar to Atom, but this is made by Microsoft, as you know from Visual Studio, if you are familiar. I'll have all these links in the description. I'm not going to be using any of these in this video. I'm just going to be using uh, the terminal for everything, uh, just to make it as simple as possible, plus this is just how I like doing things. So you're going to want to create a, a folder, a directory that we're using. So this is going to be our directory. I just created it. It's empty. And in this directory, you can do 
go mod init and our package will just be called main and as you can see here it created our mod file so the good mod init just creates a new project basically and we're calling the project main um so i'm not like i mentioned i'm not like an expert in ebiton i'm also not an expert in go so like there's some ways that could be a little bit off um, but at least we're just doing it the way that works at least so here we have our new package and we're creating it and we'll create a file we'll call it um world.go you don't need to do touch that's just to create the file and we're also going to need a dictionary um, I have a link to this as well but if you just look up wordle dictionary uh, text file or something like that on Google you're gonna be able to find something here's one right here wordle dict um, this one looks like it's a bunch of options uh, I don't know I have found one on github and that's the one I have so I'll just I'll copy that one and then I'll I'll have a link in the description for you guys can get it but uh it's just a big file just full of words that are all five letter this one that I have it's kind of it has words but they're kind of uh some of them aren't as common as others but it has a bunch of five letter words um, so if you want more common words you can just go and just find a text file that has that and we're also gonna be using a font uh, or actually okay never mind actually now I'm thinking about it we're not gonna need the font uh, the fonts gonna be provided by Ebiton so whenever we install and set up everything it's gonna have that so now into our file I'm using nano or my text editor but as I mentioned you can use any of the other text editors that I showed before anything else you can use notepad plus plus if you're a beginner it really doesn't matter um, so we're gonna declare that as our package main because that's what we used when we set it up so that's the name of the package and then in here we're going to import some libraries and these libraries are going to include um, basically some of the stuff from Ebiton and a few other things so we're not going to use all of them at first so go doesn't let you actually run stuff unless you're using things that you're declaring so that might give some errors so after we write them all down we're going to comment out some of them as we use them uh, we're going to use the format one fmt that's just for displaying some stuff into the terminal just for i guess testing purposes um, and then we're going to want to i'll copy this we want to include a i'll just copy that as such um okay i guess i copied it with that we don't want that and we'll do version two so we're copying that and i'll we're going to use a few things from here so i'm just going to have this copied it's going to be examples resources fonts and this one is going to be input util and this one is going to be text um, so basically this first one is just the main stuff this is for the font that we're going to be using this is for some keyboard input stuff that we're going to be using and this is for displaying some text onto our window and we're also going to be using golang.org x image font yeah, so I'm using both of these. I th actually, I think the font themselves is from Golang, if I remember correctly. I think we just need this for configuring some of it, along with this text option. And I'll just read this, open type. And now we're going to be doing an image color. We're not actually loading in any sort of like JPEG or PNG or anything like that, but we're going to be using Ebiton calls uh things you draw on the screen an image so even now we're going to render like a rectangle or like for the squares it's going to be called an image and also this image colors just so we can use uh that coloring stuff um io io util uh, this is going to be for loading in our dictionary file and log this is just for some error stuff math rand this is for using a random number generator so we can randomly pick out a word to use and i'm using strings because we're going to do some string manipulation also for checking some string stuff um, within the words that we're going to be looking at on the board in our game and time um, I think time uh, it's not going to be used for that much but we'll get to it when we get to it I guess so now that we have that we can declare some of our variables as well constant and let me just space this up right up here. 
and this one is going to be var. Uh, if you have trouble following along, just you can slow down the video, you can skip around, and I'll probably get this code uploaded soon as well. Um, we'll have the title of our screen, and that's going to be a string, and we can call it wordle. And we can have the width of our screen, that'll be an integer, that'll be 435, and the height, integer, 600. So technically the heights and the widths and also the things that we're covering for drawing things on the screen, they can be resized the way that you want them. But we're using a pretty specific parameters for everything. So like if you were to resize some things, it might throw off some other things. So if you want it to work perfectly, just use the same size as we're using. Um, if you want to change around some of the stuff, you're just going to have to fiddle with some of the parameters they're going to be using for drawing stuff. And then one more is going to be rows and six and columns and five. So this rows and columns is basically just going to be, there's this many columns and there's this many rows. So like I said, this is the basic word, also five letter word with six chances. But if same thing with resizing stuff, you can also change this as well um, to mix up the game a little bit. And now in our var, we're gonna set up a few things. We're gonna have the font size. That'll be an integer, that'll be 32 and we're going to have our font, uh, the font itself is m plus um, normal font, except for this is name the variable, so it doesn't actually matter, but we'll just call it what it is. That'll be font face. We'll load that in a little bit. And then we'll set up our background color. This can be the color white. And we'll set up a few colors that we're going to be using, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, color RGBA. That'll be like that. Let me copy this a few times because we're using the same format um, four times and we're also going to do the font color and this will be color.black so first off we'll do light gray light gray is going to be these color outlines and then we have a regular gray then we have the yellow the green and then we have the white of course so we have the regular gray and we have yellow and we have green. So now we just need to give it the input for all these, uh, I guess. So it's an RGBA value. A is for alpha or transparency. Um, they're all gonna be the same. So let me just, uh, I'll have that copied so we can use it. I should have done that in the first place whenever I copied them. But this is going to be C2. Um, this is something that you can mess around. You can use a color picker to figure out what you want it to do. But for this case, you want the exact same colors I'm using. You're just going to have to copy it just exactly. Um, that's OX77. It's OX7C. OX7E. And then like that. And this one is going to be OXCD. OXB3. And OX5D. Um, I'm doing these in lowercase. I think you can do them capitalized. So in case you're like you're going to be making your own, and if you're looking at some sort of color picker online that shows capitalized, I don't think it makes a difference. Um, OX60, OXA6, and OX65, and we need that comma to the end. Alrighty. So this should be all the colors that we're going to be needing. And now. We're going to be using this boolean right here. Uh, the boolean edge is just going, we're going to be keeping track of where our cursor is. As you can see, this one's a little bit more highlighted. Um, so the edge is just going to tell us if we're at the end of, like, the edge of every single one of these lines. Because that's when I want to check if it's a full word. That's when I want to check if the player presses enter and whatnot. So we're just going to be keeping track of it that way. And then we are going to be setting up a keyboard. Uh, so the player is going to be able to type in anything and we want to make sure it only types in letters in the alphabet. There's definitely a better way of doing this, but this way works perfectly fine. We're just going to type in every single letter that is going to be available. Um, it, the order doesn't matter. You can type it in alphabetically. You can type it in QWERTY based on your keyboard. It doesn't make a difference at all. Now we're going to be creating our grid. The grid is going to be coals times rows. That's the column times the rows that we divine before and that is going to be a string uh, I'm sure 
Go has like characters or tar or whatever. Uh, whereas PS Extreme, uh, it works. And I don't really know how to use every single feature. And we'll also be creating a dictionary. And this dictionary is going to be of strings as well. Or, yeah, it's going to have strings as well. And then we're also going to be having a check column. And this is going to be the, not column, but a, an array or a list of checks. And this is going to be an integer. Um, it's basically just going to say which color everything needs to be. It's like all these ones are zeros, and um, the gray is a three, the yellow is a two, the green is going to be a one. So we're just going to keep track of what color things need to be um, colored by, basically. And then location. Location goes with an edge option. It's just going to say where we are on the screen, uh, which thing that we're going to be writing to. And we'll have a one, so we can say if the player one or not. And we'll have an answer, and this answer is going to be what we're looking for. So if you want a predefined answer, you can just label it right here. Um, but we're going to be randomly picking an answer from the dictionary. So now there's a few things we're going to be setting up. We're going to want to do our main function, just to load in some stuff, uh, declaring our font and creating our window. And then we're going to have a render function or a draw function which Ebiton calls it, for displaying everything. We're going to have a function for input, so we can type all the characters. And we're going to have an update function, so it can actually do all the game's calculation. Um, Ebiton, it has a few features that you need to follow along with. Um, if you were to look at, um, I guess, I don't know if that's not the home, it is. The documents, if you were to look at the documents, and if you were to look at a, maybe under the install, it has some a basic game I guess it doesn't but there are some basic stuff in here that shows um, how to create uh, all the basic things I'm not seeing it this very second uh, I guess this is right here is one example so there's the update there's draw there's this layout layouts basically just going to return the size of it in case you need to manipulate anything the size of your window and we also need to declare a struct so I'm going to be covering over some of that stuff so the first thing we just need to create our game which is going to be the struct that I mentioned and the game is going to be using a go feature called a uh, rune uh, rune is basically just for um if I understand correctly it's basically just for characters um it's like a char like that's a rune that's a rune but also holds other things like a uh, any sort of font type any sort of um, characters in a different language like in case you're looking at something that's in I don't know Mandarin or Japanese or anything like that it can be stored. Uh, I guess it's like an ASCII character. Um, I'm not 100% correct, but we're basically just using this for keyboard input, uh, basically. And now that we've done that, I guess we can set up our main function, and then we'll do the rest of the game from there. So it's gonna be funk main. And let me bring this up a little bit. And here's our funk main. And we're going to create our game. It's going to be, here's that. And here's the game that we're creating. Um, I'm doing all these indents just to make it a little, little nicer. It doesn't actually matter. You can use Go's format option. I'll show you um, afterwards. I believe the format option doesn't actually work unless the code's working. Uh, I may be wrong. Maybe it just only works depending on like some sort of syntax errors. But we'll look at that afterwards. Um, so now we can load in our font. Uh, we're going to be checking for the font. We'll be checking for an error. And it'll be open type. Parse. And it'll be fonts. M plus 1P regular TTF. And here we'll check for an error. If error equals nil. And then we'll just log that error. Fatal error. So we're gonna be doing a few error checking stuff just for um getting started. Um I guess I guess I wasn't really covering over how everything works, because I don't know how much of a beginner everyone is. But I guess just to re- state everything we're using since this if you know how to program you're going to understand all this even if you don't know go but if you don't know how to program at all this is basically just the name of 
a program, even though the file is Wordle, this is gonna be the name of it. Um, this is including other programs that we're using, like this is including uh, all the Epiton stuff for creating our game, and then a few other features. Constant is gonna be variables that don't change. This is gonna be the name of our window, this is the size of our window, and this is gonna be the grid size of the game and whatnot. Here are the variables that we're gonna be using for like the font size, the font that we're creating, all the colors, and then I think I explained all of these. And the main function is what the game runs first. So this function main, um, as soon as the game starts, it's going to run anything inside of here within these brackets. So it's going to create the new game. That's what this is doing. The game's going to be called G and it's setting it to new. So it's going to be creating a new one of these, which includes these runes. And then we're loading in a new font. Um, this one's creating right here and it's creating the font and it's also checking for errors. So we're just seeing if the error does not equal empty, nil, basically a way of just doing like zero or nothing or empty um, and then it's gonna be log fatal fatal is gonna cause it to close and whatnot or I guess it's the way it actually maybe it doesn't cause it to close but that's what causes it to display as an error um, it may close it as well and then it displays the error um, so hopefully this all makes sense to anyone uh, I can't explain every single concept that we're doing but I think it's gonna be fairly easy to follow along hopefully so now we're going to be using, uh, oh, I'm down here. Um, we're creating another variable quickly for a DPI. It's going to be 72. Um, DPI, I guess, is uh, it's like the depth pixel something. I think it just has to do with how detailed the pixels are. So we're using that for the font whenever we get it set up. So it would be normal font. Uh, 72 is a pretty regular size. Uh, if it gets too big or too small, it might look a little funky, I guess. Um, new face, TT, open type, face, options. So now we're passing in the options for our font. And we're going to use that DPI for this. Um, we'll do size. Actually, now I think about it, that's not even useful. You can just type it in manually down here. DPI, and that's going to be 72. Hinting font hinting full and that's basically everything we need for uh, passing in options for our font uh, oh, the size is 24 we're not gonna be using uh, actually so this needs to be 24 and we can change that size to font size I believe uh, the example of that and the DPI is because I had originally made this and I kind of like changed some things so some of the code I'm trying to think about is, uh, and also look at, I'm looking at some of the stuff, is a little bit differently than what it actually ended up being. Um, so here that, that is, that's uh, done all that stuff. And now once again, I'll copy this right here and I'll paste it again down here. It's for checking for this new error. And that's just to make sure it worked again. And now we'll be creating our window. I'll be using Ebiton set window size then width and height and now we can set the title set window title to title and then content air i o u t i l and so this is for making the window obviously and telling it the size and the title right here me loading in our dictionary file file so it's going to be read file dict.txt and here I can paste there the error checker once again and we're going to be changing some of this a little bit later I'll explain exactly what we're doing because from what I can tell whenever we load it into this website form it can't actually access the file at least the way that I'm doing it uh, so I'll, once we get to this part, I'll show you what we're going to do for that. But as long as there's not an error, we're going to load in our dictionary and we can save it. There's dictionary right there. Strings, split, string, content. And we'll split it by the enters. So what this is doing, it's loading in the file, checking if there's an error. And if there's not an error, else then it's going to take our variable dict that we made up there and this is basically going to split up the file 
um, by line into arrays. So every single array is going to be element or index is going to be given a line from that file. Now ran seed, uh, we're using that time, um, Unix nano. I believe this time should work on anything, uh, from what I can tell. If you have a problem with this, say you're not, say you're running on Windows, and maybe there's a problem, you can probably just look up, um, I wouldn't look up how to do the time on Windows, I would look up how to make set a random seed in Windows on with Go, um, and that'll tell you the time way. And then answer, but I, I assume that feature, just time now, Unix Nano is gonna work for everyone. Uh, random seed is because computer doesn't actually generate something random, I mean, that's not possible really. Um, so you're giving it a seed, just like, you know, uh, I guess Minecraft or Terraria or some other games have seeds for randomly generating things. A seed is just going to be based on whatever time it is. Not the minute, but like to the nanosecond, basically. So it's going to be pretty specific to when you run it. And then it passes that in so it can randomly, pseudo-randomly generate something. And we're using that to randomly pick out an, um, a word from our new dictionary. So it'll be int n length of dict there it is so we're saying pick a word from dictionary so this is and then we're saying telling it to random number and the random number is based on the size of the dictionary and right here just for uh, simplicity's sake and whatnot we're going to be printing out the answer so whenever we run it in the command line we can see exactly what it is so now that everything is all set up we can run our game Neviton run game G. We'll check for an error. Does not equal nil. And here it's going to have the error log fatal error. And basically, this right here, it just running the game and it's checking for an error. If there is, then it'll crash. But this is everything that we're going to need in our main function. Um, Still, I don't think everything's going to be able to run since we're not using all this stuff and we're not using a lot of these variables, so we can't show you what it's going to do. It's not really going to do anything. The only thing it's going to output, uh, I, I'm not drawing anything to the window. It might still display the window. It probably will until you just close it by clicking X and it should get a random word. But now we can set up the rest of our functions right here. Um, we'll have as I showed right here, when I need these ones, the update, draw, and the layout. Uh, the layout one's gonna be really simple. It's not really used for anything, um, that, but it, I believe it's required. Uh, but go ahead and try not doing it. Let's see if it works, let me know in the comments. Um, outside width, outside height, int, int, int. Width and height, but I basically think this is just for readjusting the size of your window, or depending on what is being displayed on, it knows the size. Um, but we're not actually using that for anything, as far as I can tell. And then we'll have our funk G game draw screen, and the screen is an Everton image. So like I mentioned before, things that you render onto are just called images. It doesn't actually mean it's loaded in from a file or anything. It's just an image, and that's what it is. And well, before we fill in all these functions, uh, we just filled in this other one, the layout one, because it was really short, and the main one just to get that one over with. But we'll just quickly declare all these functions. Uh, we function uh, g game update and then error. And we're going to have a function for our keyboard output. Uh, this function is actually something I just pulled from one of his examples of a, for a keyboard. And then change a little bit. Is a, I think it was this typewriter one that I got this from. And we're using func repeating key pressed. This is basically just for checking if the key is like um, being held down or something. Because you don't want to, someone to, hold the key down for a second and then all of a sudden it draws a bunch of that whatever letter they're holding down you just want it to do a single time so bool 
So, but yeah, this is directly copied from uh, Hoshi's um, example. Um, even though, I mean, I guess most of this setup is from his stuff too. And that's gonna be a const delay equals 30, interval equals three, and close that. And then D will be equal to input util dot key pressed, no, key press, duration, key. And if D equals one, then return true. And then if D is greater or equal to the delay and D minus delay is modular of the interval is equal to zero, then you can return true as well. If not, we're going to be returning false. Um, this is basically just checking the count between, uh, I guess, how long the letter or character has been pressed. So it's just making sure that we don't, as the function says, uh, have any repeating characters being pressed over and over. And we're going to need an input function as well. This function. Actually, the input stuff, we're just going to do it in our update function. So we can just have that in the update. Um, I guess we can try running this now and then. I don't. I actually, no, there's no point in running it yet because a lot of the stuff's not going to work yet. But I want to run it as we do things so you can see stuff. But like, this isn't really going to do anything yet. But now, I guess we can draw our grid and that we can check because that's something we can see so for drawing this we're going to first take the screen which is this image and we're going to fill it in and we'll fill it in with our background color and now we're going to be setting up a few things uh, right here this is a reminder for later we're going to do if one and We'll check if the player is one, and we'll fill that in later once we're close to finishing it. Now, here we're going to draw our grid. So, for width, zero. Zero is called, so it's just a for loop. So we're just looping through the size of that. And I'll copy that. Call this height. Height, and this one is going to be the rows. And we're going to be drawing the grid inside of here. We will call each square that we're drawing, just call it a rectangle. It's going to be Abiton new image. And we'll have a 75 by 75. So that's what I mentioned with the sizes of the window and stuff. Um, as soon as you want to change the size of the window, it's going to throw off some of the other things. So it's kind of better to stick to the exact numbers that we're using. Unless you want to mess around with some things. And now we're going to sell it to fill this rectangle with the color white gray and we can also set the font color to color black and that is because if you notice the color changes um, so the one you're typing on is black and the one in the completed lines are white so we're going to be changing the color throughout so now that we've set this to black um, what we would actually do is we're going to be checking this check option to see which color the rectangle should be in the case that it's been used before. In other words, in the case that it's not light gray anymore. Um, so we can just do that just already. So let's do if check and it's going to be uh, like this. It's going to be W plus height time columns and this is basically just using this and this to figure out where in the array it's going to be that is does not equal zero so in other words if it shouldn't be light gray then what should it be I'll copy that real quick 
And let's say this one is four if it equals one. We'll indent that as well. It's easier to read. So it's equal to one, then rect fill will be green. And we'll copy this for the other colors. This one will be yellow. And this one will be gray. And that one is three, and that is two. So this is just checking in the index of this array. Um, if it's not one, or if it's not zero, uh, what color it should be. And in our update function, we're gonna be actually changing this stuff to declare like what it should be and whatnot. And also if it's already been filled, we're gonna want to change the font color. So we'll just do font color equals color dot white. And that should be everything that we're gonna need in there. Now, so this is something I said I don't know how to use everything correctly. We're gonna be drawing a rectangle just like this, but we wanna do also is have these outlines of rectangles. I'm not sure how to draw an outline, so what we're gonna do is draw the rectangle and then we're gonna draw a white rectangle over it just a little bit smaller. So that's something that we're going to uh, do after we draw the first rectangle. And we're gonna do that based on if the check is zero, but we'll get to that in just a second. Um, we're also going to need this if the rectangle col times columns times height equals the location and then check w times width times uh, coals um, equals zero. This is basically checking where our cursor is as you can tell our cursor is right here it's a little bit darker and we're going to be coloring that in, that in as gray as well just to make it a little bit darker except like i mentioned we're going to draw a white one over it so it's going to make it look different than these ones up here okay let me smooth this up a little bit okay now a little bit more So now that we have that, we can actually draw it. We're already setting some options. Um, the options is basically just saying where it needs to be drawn and whatnot. And that is going to be with Ebiton, draw image options. And I'm using the options GOM. I'm not sure what this stands for exactly. It's some sort of geometry thing. And translate. Translate is going to be using some sort of matrix math to figure out where the object should be on the screen. Uh, this function takes in float 64s, so we're going to have to cast our numbers, the float 64s, like so. And it'll be w plus 85, or no, times 85 plus 10. 10 is the offset. Um, say this is our thing right here, so the offset for all of them is plus 10. And the 85 is just going to be the sizes of them, even though... And that 85 adds an offset of 10 for each one of them because we made them 75. And that's going to be the same thing right here, except for this is going to be the height. It's going to be 85 plus 10. Now here we can actually go and draw it. Screen draw image rect with its options. And now we're going to want to draw these white ones in case it needs a white one. So you can do if check w plus h times calls columns equals zero now we want to draw a white rectangle um, to draw the white rectangle we can actually copy this and put it inside of here i'm using it for drawing some stuff again um and now we could just reuse some of these things but we're going to be using different variables for these ones we'll just call it two and then right here we want to actually create a new rectangle as well. Call that one too. And Ebiton new image. Um, we're just gonna have it offset by one pixel. It's 75, so it's gonna be 73, because it's one pixel on every side. And we're gonna wanna set a color to white as well. So rect two, fill color dot white. And that should be everything we need for drawing on this extra white one for all of these. 
And now we want to also draw in all the letters uh, for every single one of these things. And so we can do right here, do if grid. So the grid is keeping track of the letters in each one of the grids. So we're going to check to see if there is a letter. And if there is, we're going to draw it. So right here, we're checking for the letters. So in other words, if it is not empty. Um, once again, there could be a better way of doing this and go, but that's just how we're checking it. Um, message is going to be just the variable for the letter that we're going to be drawing. It's going to be using this format. Uh, strings to upper, we want it to be an uppercase letter, grid, and instead of rewriting that, I'm just going to copy that right there. Um, I brought the line over, but it's just grid, it's just that right there. Um, does not, it's grid, then it's closed. We're going to close to upper, and we're going to close the sprint F, and that's going to create it. I guess I can make this a little bigger for you can see it. So that's what we created right there. And now we can go ahead and draw it using text. We'll draw it to the screen. We're drawing message and we're drawing it with our font. And our location is going to be this. It's going to be W85 plus 38. So the 85 is the size of the tiles and 30H for this option is going to be the offset. So it knows where to draw. And this is basically going to make it so the font that we're using with the font size is going to fit roughly in the middle. Um, and this is going to be H times 85. And this one is going to be plus 55. Um, the offset for this one's a little bit differently. And we're going to pass in our font color. And that is everything for drawing that. Um, I set the screen to be a little bit bigger um, than the actual, as you can see, there's an extra space down here. That's because whenever you lose, or even when you win, it'll display a message there. We'll say like, you won, or it'll display the word that it was if you had lost. Now that we've done this, let's actually go and test it. Uh, it's gonna give us some errors. It's gonna say that we're not using some things. So we're gonna go and comment those ones out that we're not using. Um, I'll use build. Uh, so it shows the errors first. Okay, so this is the first thing. It's gonna say that we don't actually have Everton and whatnot. That's because, I mean, I haven't showed you that yet. So to do that, you can do go mod tidy, and it should get everything that we need. There you can see, it's finding all the models. And this might take a minute. Of course, it's downloading everything, but it sees everything that we asked for, and it's getting all of them. Um, goes really simple and easy with that. Uh, and it's pretty nice as you can see it looks like it should have everything we can try that one more time and let's see what this error was um, line 71 let's just go and look at line 71 non-declaration statement outside of function okay uh, that was mistyped it's a func not a function and here Okay, miss and return at the end of function. That's line 69. Uh, this is basically the same spot. Okay, so this is going to need to return something um, because we don't actually have it. Uh, let's actually put that return in already. So let me quickly see, to remind myself what that's supposed to be returning. Um, okay, it's supposed to just return a nil. Uh, there's no error. Okay, cannot use font size in the field value. It's supposed to be a float 64. Okay, because this is one of those things that I mentioned that I changed. So, yeah, let's leave it at float 64 unless the other one also gives an error that we used it before earlier. Okay, there's no error, looks like. Um, what's it called? It's called main. It's creating it. As you can see, it picked a random word. And as you can see, here is our grid. Um, it's drawn the grid a little bit differently than we hoped. Um, the location is set at zero by default, so it shows we're in this front, this one right here. And I drew all the other ones with the light gray and this one with the dark gray. Uh, this white box that we drew is a little bit incorrect, so we can go and quickly fix that. Um, it's just gonna be in this file. And uh, let's look for where we did white. It's gonna be down here. Okay, no, it's not that yet either. Okay, right here. Um, this is going to be a little bit off. 
I have the exact numbers from the other one. Let me look at that real quick. Okay, so this is going to be plus one right here. And this one is plus one because it's offset just a little bit. Now that there's no errors, we can just do go run. And, oh, there was an error now. 96 is probably something we just did. Not oh, supposed to be one first off. Um, so there it was. Uh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, it was. Okay. And here we go. We have our grid, and it's displayed correctly, and it's highlighting correctly. So now that we got that, we're going to setting up so you can type into it, and then we're going to set up so it checks the edges for you to click enter, and so it can compare your word that you created to the dictionary and to the correct answer. And as you can see, I randomly picked an answer. This was that one, and that was from the first time. Um, the go format option is this, go format. Um, you can just do dot as well, and that's going to format the file. Um, doing dot it just means it's whatever directly directory that you're currently in so we're running the package that's in this directory or formatting the package in this directory and up here we built the package for the directory the build creates a runnable um, the runnable uh, just does a quick test it basically just creates it and runs it and deletes it afterwards um, so go run is usually what I use just for testing that's what I'm using from here on out unless there's some sort of error or anything that we need to be figuring out but now back into our file for drawing we're basically done with everything in the drawing um, afterwards we're going to set change some win stuff as we can say if the player won it's going to be like this it's going to display a win message and also afterwards we're going to display something down here for if the player lost and we're going to be checking that down here as well I believe but we'll get to that when we get to it now the rest of our game is going to be in the update function and the first thing in the update function or one of the first things should be checking the player's input the keyboard input and all this also is we're going to be checking um, if the player hasn't won we don't want the player to do input stuff after he's already won so we'll just do if the player has not won the exclamation means it's a false and in here we'll do g runes Everton dot append input chars g runes and it's going to get the very last one because you can press two characters at once we only want one of them um, all right maybe that's the first one but either way it's going to work the way we want it to um, all of this is from that typewriter program other than this uh, that's something I just added uh, it makes it so we only get one character at a time just to make sure and if strings contains and this is another thing that I added as well um, this has to do with an alphabet so we want to make sure that alphabet contains whatever thing that we're using G runes and we also want to check that G runes is not empty for whatever reason that it could be it does not equal empty and we'll also check if the location is greater or equal than zero just to make sure that locations in the grid uh, get rid of sort of any error problems and that location is less than rows times columns so if all that is true then grid location is equal to string g runes zero one and then close that off um that's supposed to be that right there oh this right here is actually what gets the first character this must be from the typewriter code that i got and then right here if not the edge then location plus plus and that is because if it's at the edge we don't want him to be able to get to the next line because we want him to press enter and the word to be checked so we don't want him to just continuously writing any way that he wants to and we can actually go and test this out I'm going to pull up a new terminal 
so we can switch back and forth a little bit easier. I'll go in the Wordle Go and then go run. And then bam, it's gonna run. And here we go. And there, we can type. Um, we're not actually checking for the edge, so it doesn't actually know we're at the edge. So you can fill out the whole thing. Um, as you can see, once we got to the end, if you keep clicking, it doesn't do anything. And that is because um, we had checked. Uh, well, I guess it's the wrong line. Oh, let me see right here. We checked to make sure that it was less than the size of the grid. But that is basically everything we're going to be doing um, for this part. It works correctly. Um, and you may notice it makes sure that you only type in letters that are in the alphabet, which we defined above. So that works perfectly. Um, we're also going to see the reason that you want to make sure the location is not less than zero is because we're going to be setting up a backspace and we don't want to backspace outside or in lower than zero outside of the grid. Now we're going to set edge to false. Um, we're going to assume that it's not at the edge and then we'll check to see if it's at the edge. Now if you were to run this again, you won't be able to draw past that edge. And, um, you can test all these things for yourself. Oh, wait a second. No, because edge is supposed to be supposed to be false. Once it's at the edge is when it's true. So if you were to do this true, then it won't draw past it. Oh. Well I guess the edge is always true. So yeah, it can't draw past the first thing. But we'll set that back to false. Okay. And now we'll do if location plus two um, mod of columns equals equals one. So this is basically saying if our current location uh, is a modular of columns, that means it's at the edge. We're doing a plus two because the way that we're gonna be adding onto the location is actually gonna make it a little bit off from the edge. So we're gonna be calculating that to see this is where the edge is basically. And we're gonna say if that's where the edge is, then we can't move. And the location's also not zero because um, if the location's at the very beginning, it's also going to think it's at the, the edge as well. And we'll do edge equals true. And here we can run that one more time. And bam, we get to the end of it and it won't let us pass it. Now if edge equals true and repeating so we're using that function I made earlier okay, repeating key pressed dot key enter or uh, let's hopefully this line doesn't get too long but repeating key pressed Ebiton key numpad enter so what we're checking is to see if the enter button was pressed. There's an enter just on your keyboard and there's also an enter on your numpad. So we're checking for both of those. Um, and then we'll do and the grid location does not equal blank. So if we're at the edge and the edge answer has been filled in, just to make sure that you also typed in the last one, then we're be checking if the key, the enter was pressed. And from now, we're gonna actually go and check to see if there's a word. Um, we're gonna figure out what letters in the word are correct, what letters are not, what letters are in the word, and we're gonna decide if players won or not. And that is all gonna be in here in this checking function. So we're gonna create a string of the word, basically. We're gonna look at the last five characters, put that in all a string. That's just gonna make it a little bit easier for checking some things. So right here is going to be using Location minus the columns. I'll put that in parentheses as well. Um, one, and then location is greater than or i is greater than location plus one, and i plus plus. And this is basically going to figure out uh, where in the grid that we need to look at to get the right letters. So it's going to be adding those letters based on that. So now if you were to print out this imp, uh, imp is input basically, it's just what it's short for. Um, this is what we're calling it. If you were to print that out, 
it's going to be whatever word you had typed in. Uh, we can actually go ahead and do that just for testing. Um, IMP. And now, pull this terminal. And here it's missing something that is on line 84. That's probably something that we just typed. Um, let's go to line 84. And yes, okay. Um, unexpected, okay. Let's see. So that's closed off at the end. Let's go to that. Maybe that probably should be it. Nope, it was not it. Uh, that should have two closed parentheses. Should have one open. Repeating key pressed. Oh, I typed this in wrong. So that's key pressed. And this right here is going to be Everton. And that one's going to need one more close. And that still not it. But so it's repeating key pressed. Everton key enter. Or. Uh, okay, it's because these ors are supposed to be together. That's closed right there. Because you just want to make sure one enters are pressed. So here's the answer. And now we can type in hello, clicked hello, and it made a string, and it printed that one out as well. Um, it doesn't bring you on to the next one, it doesn't check anything. That's because we haven't done that yet. And uh, we'll just comment this one out. And you can delete it, comment it, and leave it, whatever you want. It's not going to be used in the final game. Now we're going to check if it is a valid word. We're going to set up a boolean for that. And we're going to assume that the word is not valid from the get-go. And we'll do for w ranged dict. Um, we're going to look through the whole entire dictionary and see if that word matches. So if w equals m, then it is a valid word. Valid word equals true. So we're just looping through the whole entire dictionary. If the valid word is equal to any word in that dictionary, then it works. So now we're gonna say, if the word is valid, that's what's gonna determine um, to continue on to the next row. We're going to think about this for a split second we're going to create we're going to create a an array of booleans for the word um, based on the size to see what has been checked this is where I want to check through every single letter in the five letter word and we're going to see which ones have been used and which ones need to be used still and now we're going to do a loop for I, letter, and then range, imp. So we're now we're gonna loop through each letter in the input. And with that, we're gonna be looping through each letter and the answer as well. And then it's gonna be range of answer. Go has a function just to see if a letter is in a word, but we're gonna be, we're gonna use that as well. Um, it's the same way that we did with the alphabet earlier, but we're also going to be looping through the answer as well. We'll do if i equals equals j. So i and j are not the characters, they're not the string or the letter, they are what number it is. So we're trying to see if um, it's the exact same placement. Um, we're seeing this is the first word, so we're looking at this one. We're doing h, h is the first letter. So we're going to look at the first letter of that one. We're trying to see if they're the exact same number. So if they are the first letter, we also want to know if they are going to be the exact same uh, answer as well. So uh, we can do that right here. we we'll do and, and we'll do string of the letter. Does it equal string of the answer as such? And if so, we need to do check location minus columns plus i plus one equals one. As we know, check of one is going to be green. Uh, location, that's where we are, minus the columns because we're on the next row, so we're going one row back, um, plus i to see where we're at, and then it needs to be offset by one just to get the exact same thing. 
else right here. Um, we're going to be checking for the yellow ones afterwards, but else right here is going to just say, let's just make it a gray. Location, minus columns, plus I, um, plus one, equals three, and three is gray. The reason that we're doing the yellow afterwards is because we want to figure out which green ones have been used, so that way yellow ones aren't ones that have been green or they're not repeated ones. We don't want to say there's one L in a word, but we type in two L's, we type hello, we don't want both of those L's to be highlighted yellow. We just want one of them to be highlighted yellow. And to say there's a letter that's been used, that's already been turned green, we don't want that one to be reused. So what we're gonna do, this is actually, it's gonna be in this if valid word still. Um, we're gonna loop through it one more time. Um, possibly a better way of doing this, but this works and there's no lag or anything like that. It seems perfectly fine. Now do if strings contains. Now we're just gonna quickly check to make sure that it's actually in there. Um, it's kind of the same thing that we did before, but it's just gonna make sure it doesn't run anything if it doesn't need to. We're gonna see if the letter is inside of the string. And if it is, we're gonna keep track if it's found or not found, it's gonna be false. And then 4j ands and ands will be uh, same thing range answer and in here we're going to actually check for it and we're going to check if it's been found or not so I'll just do if found equals false because we don't because we're going to be looping through here and uh, probably could break but I'm not exactly sure the correct way to do in that just the way I'm setting it up I guess you can break instead of using this found thing uh, it doesn't matter um, but if found equals false and check word J equals false that means that's that boolean that we have set up up here um, means we're me setting the false things in there so we know if it's been found or not and now we want to check if it's the exact same word so if letter equals string and of course this could be on the same line but uh just want to have it in here now the check word for j equals true and the oh sorry about that jump down here or back to where we were um so the check word is true found can be equal true as well and check the location minus the columns the same thing we did last time i plus one equals two and that is going to be yellow so now we figured out if it's going to be yellow or not now we're going to want to check if the input is the answer so if input equals answer then then one equals true of course this could be inline but uh should stand out so i'll just do right there location plus plus edge equals false um maybe we already had that defined up there uh, it doesn't really matter um, it's not supposed to be there and down here we're going to check the location to make sure that it's always correctly in the right spot uh, location is greater than zero then location will equal to zero and if the location is greater than rows times columns then location will be equal to rows times columns minus one alrighty and that is everything we should need for that um, the game itself should work but what we're going to do is set up the winning message and also, I guess, the losing message. So if the player has won, we're going to do winner equals good job. This is going to be a message that we're going to display. Good job as such. Um, it's going to need that. And then for i equals zero, and then i of the length of winner so this way you're gonna be able to change that message to anything you want um, it might change the 
layout because we're not going to do too much calculation of where to draw it. I'm going to manually put in some numbers, but I'm going to do message equals same thing like before. It's going to be format sprint f strings to upper. Of course, you can already write it upper, but this is what we're doing. Ruin winner i. One, two, three. All right. Um, this looks really complex, but this format sprint f is just a, the format that we need to display it. This strings function is for making all uppercase. Um, it's like this just because I actually I copy this from what we're gonna do a little bit below, and then this string ruin winner i. It's a uh, taking in this winner, making it an array of strings. It's getting i so it gets the correct position from the loop, and then it's converting it to a string, making it an upper, and then converting it to that font right, format right there that we need. Where's my cursor? Okay. And now we can draw it, and let's actually set the font color to black. Color black. And text.draw, the same exact way we did it before. Um, screen message m plus normal font i times 85 plus 40 rows times 85 plus 55 and then font color um, so yeah that's gonna display the winning message and the message in case you lost it's going to be pretty similar um, I'll copy this just in case so you can see how close it's going to be. It's going to be down here towards the end of the draw function. Um, what we want to do if maybe let me double check to make sure which uh, one of these things it's going to be in. Okay, so it's not going to be in this loop. Yeah, we'll just be right outside of it. Yeah, so that should just be right here. Um, we'll do if not one and the check length check minus one is not equal zero. So that means if the last check, which is the color, is not zero, that means we've already clicked enter on the last row, and that means that the grid has been filled and the player also has not won. Um, go ahead and paste this from above. Uh, instead of winner, we're going to be replacing this winner with the answer. Let's just display the answer. And it'll be color black as well. And the answer is going to be a little bit different size. We're going to do that at 38, and that should work. Alrighty, now let's try this out. Go run. Um, I'm going to try build because I don't want it to run immediately. It might get some errors. Alright. Unified win, unified winner. Okay, 182. Uh, is that okay, 182? Um, change that to answer. This right here should be answer as well. And then line 137. 137. If win. Okay, uh, was it one? Is that what it was? All right, now I can run it. All righty. There's our answer, bats. Um, let's try hello world. Okay, I guess I could have tried something that <laughs> had the letters in it. Uh, let me do Tates. Alrighty, T A T S. There are two T's, there's one S, and there's an A, so that works. Um, we can try a word that's going to have uh, two A's. Um, let me think of a word that has two A's real quick. Uh, here, one second. CD and the word all looking here. Uh, we're gonna grep for two A's in the dictionary. There it is. Alrighty, only one of the A's was highlighted because there's only one A. And now, um, oh, I just realized we haven't set up the delete stuff. I will do that in a second. So right here, I'll click bats and. Oh, that was highlighted green. Um, okay, so we'll fix that. 
uh, it's a good job, doesn't fit as well, so we'll fix that, and we'll set up the delete as well. But other than that, it looks like almost everything works. Um, first off, looking at this good job, uh, the good job just isn't the right size. Um, it probably has to do with this spacing right here. It's I-85, um, 85, 55. Mm, good job. I guess we can make this a little bit smaller. Let's uh, try 40. Uh, we can test that once we're back done, once we're going to test the program again. Okay, and then this is not draw. We're gonna go back to our update function. And then here, it's replacing it with yellow, even now up here, I think we already had it set to green. Um, we can have a check to make sure that the actual green works. Um, so we're looping through, we're seeing if it's the exact same, I and J are the same, and then we're seeing if the letter and the answer are the same. And if so, it's going to be one and one. Let's go and quickly double check down here. One is going to be fill green. So that should work. So I think what we're doing is we're setting it to one, but down here we're probably overriding it. So if found equals false, and if check word J equals false, Okay, that's because I believe we are overriding it right here. Um, what I want to do is we can do and check equals false. And in here, we're just going to check based on the position, which should be local calls plus I plus one. And um, that doesn't work. We can go back and fix that. So now we need a backspace function as well. Um, backspace should be Build to be done right here, and that is going to be pretty similar just to checking the enter as well. And let me just do if repeating key pressed oh, Everton key backspace, and also we just don't want to make sure it's at the very beginning. And all to do if check. Location minus one equals zero. Then the grid location will be equal to blank. So we're deleting it. And then we'll set back our location as such. Now let's close this. And let's try this one more time. Uh, let's do the same. I'll close that. I don't think it's terminal. Okay, it's the terminal. You go run. Boom, invalid, of course, invalid. I guess it's wrong type. Um, yeah, not supposed to be equal and false. It's supposed to be equal if it's equal to not equal to one. We don't want to replace the ones. Okay, Falf. Let's do, I don't know what words are in this dictionary. Okay, fours is in here. Uh, that should be green, so that's one error. So I can go and fix that in a second. I guess that didn't work. Um, now let's just fill this up. Okay, yeah, here it displayed our answer. Um, we also we can quickly check to make sure that the good job is displayed correctly. Uh, we can change that a little bit just based on it. Rared, so let's just type that in and rared. So that worked. Good job. Uh, we can have that indented this a little bit more out. So let's just something you can play around with, but let's just uh, indent that a little bit more. Uh, where's our draw function? Down here. Um, this is the X, so let's change that to 45. And that should be fine. Uh, maybe we can do that 50. That's something you can play around with if you want to. Um, now the green is what is being messed up. So let's just double check this one more time. It's uh, setting it to green. And let's look up here. So I was checking if that should be green, I equals J. And then if the letter and answers are the same. Oh, I see our problem. We need to tell it that this answer has already been checked. Checked word, I equals true. 
This one was able to get away with it, but I believe that was because it was the last letter. Okay, home. Let's try. Homes. Okay, that did not work. Uh, yep, yeah, it's only the last one that's working. Now, the other one's not working at all. Um, Alright, so let me figure this out real quick. All right, that took a little while. Um, I realized my mistake. I, I actually don't remember if I mentioned, but on this line and the one that sets the yellows, um, it's checking if it's false or check word. I think I was checking to see if the check word was true also, but I deleted that. And then right here, this is setting everything to gray. So to fix that, it's going to be if they are in the same position. So that's going to fix it. Also, there's something in our function we made earlier. What's it called? Yeah, the repeating function. That I realized there was a typo. I had set it right, but I wrote it wrong. Right here in the repeating function, that's an ampersand. It's supposed to be percentage for doing modular stuff. Um, and that should be everything we need. Oh, and I have print out those numbers. That's not correct. So aired. Boom, can't type anymore. Um, let's run it again. Holtz. So now let's look up, uh, let's look at um, boats. Oh, click on it. Oh. On. So now let's run it again. And the answer is koala. Let's uh, type in uh, hello. That's going to have an L and an O. And we can type in something that's going to be in the correct space. Um, uh, world's going to be in the correct space, the O and the L. And then right here, we need something that's going to have two L's. Test that. Kills. And only one L works. And there's the K works as well. So now koala. Boom. As you can see, everything works. It says good job. And if we were to type in the wrong word uh, for the whole entire thing, get all of them wrong. And also, before I show that, you can see if we were to do that, click enter, click enter as much as you want. It's not going to work. It has to be a word as found in the dictionary. And there, that's our answer. And uh, I didn't show you guys this, but I'm going to quickly delete that. These print statements. Okay, so now that works, and we have finished our game. The application works. But now, let's say you want to make it a website, like I have mine. The Ebiton, do I have that open? It has options for porting your game. Port might not be the correct word, but I, yeah, I guess it's porting. Um, to different platforms, a phone and whatnot. I haven't actually figured out how to use the Abiton Mobile, um, so if you guys can go ahead and play around with that if you want. But I did figure out how to set it up with WebAssembly um, to make it onto a website. And that is using their their documents. You look at, nope, I clicked the wrong one, WebAssembly. And he has two options. This option did not work for me. You can try it out if you want to. But we're going to do the compiling it by yourself. And so if you have a server or a website, you can have it on there. If you want to have it on your own computer, you can't just have uh, the file be anywhere. Or maybe you can. I guess we, let's, let's test it out, actually. Um, but we're going to want to copy this line. Uh, we, can, we can type it ourselves. But it's going to be. Let's clear that. It's going to be goose equals JS because we're going to be using WebAssembly, I guess, to convert it to JavaScript. I believe. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but WebAssembly. Go build. Oh, then your game. Uh, we'll call it uh, Wordle. Dot 
wasm. And then your game also. This should use a period because that's where our directory is in. Click enter, and there it worked. So you can check right now. It created this wasm file, the Ortisim web assembly file. Now let's try this. Go environment, go root, miscellaneous, wasm, wasm, execute.js. And that works as well. If you don't have a go root, uh, it's most likely just something like my home directory is home Avery, and my go root is home Avery go. Um, so if yours doesn't work, that's most likely where this file is. If not, uh, you can try locate this. Um, this is my have a bunch of files. Okay, and as you see, I have a couple files, and this is the one that's yeah, that's my Wordle. But um, I guess maybe that creates it. But uh, either way, you're gonna be able to get the file that you're looking for. All right, here's the actual file. Uh, okay, so I lied. Mine is not under Home Avery. It's under this user share. Uh, that's because it's installed for all the users. But um, yeah. So if you don't have your Go root, um, for some reason that doesn't work. Uh, you should be able to locate this file and then just put that file just right here. Oh, the copy, that's why this is right here, because I copied it into this directory. Duh. Okay. Um, we're not going to type out all this, all this link in the description, so you can just copy this. What's uh, do index.html? Index just makes it so it's the default thing. See, this one's webassembly.html. If we were to delete that, it's in a different page. It doesn't say the name of the page. That's because we're on index.html. So in here, let's just go and copy this. Copy that right into here. We're going to have to change right here. Um, we call this Wordle. It's just the name of our file. Close that. And now, okay, actually, we're just going to move. This one is not going to be called index. We call this one game.html. Now, in the index.html, we're going to have an iframe that takes in the game.html. So, game. And we want this iframe to be the same size as our game window which we have up here don't we 435 and 600 all right now let's see if there's anything else we need there is not oh actually it says for chrome that you should add this to your iframe so we're going to do that so add that right here all right now let's open this up index.html and okay that's okay so the game is possibly working this is something i mentioned earlier about uh not being able to load in the dictionary you can probably be looking it up um inspect console there's failed uh cross the fetch from origin Uh, original has been blocked. Okay, so not sure exactly what this means. It either has, to, I don't think it has to do with the dictionary. I think it has to do with the location. It's not going to work in here, possibly. Um, so if you want it to have working on your own, um, I guess let's set up, let's fix the dictionary problem first to see if that fixes it. Um, if it doesn't work, I'm going to show you how to fix this. So in here, this is going to be something like the dictionary. You're going to have to copy and paste. I made this file, I didn't manually do it, but uh, we're not covering how to do that completely. But um, instead of this log fatal, the dictionary does not work. We're gonna manually give it the dictionary. And of course you're gonna, you know, that's kind of weird, but uh, we're gonna do it. Um, and then do that, it's gonna be pretty big, but we're gonna do dict equals string like that and the dictionary is just going to be like this um, but yeah it's gonna be a lot of words you're not gonna type them in all yourself so you're just gonna want to copy it and paste it I have a file for it um, should be able to read in the file just from Nano but I'll have it so you can copy and paste it uh, file name to write oh, wait. write out no nope, that was the wrong one um, read file okay what's uh make sure it's the same file that I'm trying to read in um ls it's gonna be in here um gedit evitin 
Benedict for let's check this out. Okay, yep, this is it. As you can see, it's formatted like that. So that's gonna actually let's delete that. Okay, now let's read in our file. So Abitin dict for txt, and bam, there's the dictionary. Um, yeah, so some people might think it's weird or manually put things in the sin, uh, but it works. Uh, if you guys know a different way to make it so you can load in the dictionary file, go ahead and let me know. Um, let's go back in here. Let's control Shift R will force reload it. See, that is not what the main problem was, but that's all right. So if you want to set up a web server, uh, you can get Apache. Apache will be a very quick and easy fix. You can also do Nginx, uh, N-G-I-N-X. That's what I use my server, but Apache is the quickest thing to set up from what I can tell. Apache's right here. Uh, if you have apt, just sudo apt, install Apache, I believe. Um, has no installation candidates, I lied to you. Um, but uh, apt cache search Apache. Oh, there's too many things, okay. Uh, here. But it's gonna say here. You can get the distributions. Um, that's gonna make it a little bit more confusing. Um, install, so you're gonna have to look it up on your individual computer. But install Apache Ubuntu is just what we're gonna need. And it's gonna say how to install it from the terminal. That'll just be the easiest way. But either way, um, once you have Apache installed, so go, your directory is going to be under uh, ls var web html. And by default, your index file, you can pull it up by localhost. I moved my file, but it's going to look like this with the Apache. Um, so we're just going to want to create something in the var.wwhtml, or I want to copy everything over to it. So I'm going to make directory var.wwhtml, epitin, calls one go. Oh, I don't want that period in there. Move directory var wwhtml Abitin. go okay and now let's close this one in here what's a uh, copy everything in here to bar wwhtml Abitin. go all right now in here let's go to Abitin. go Was not found on this server. Uh, okay, I wrote that wrong. Oh, edit. Go. Alrighty. So it's all black. Um, so that should give a different error. No program has a go program already exited. Okay, open dict txt, not implemented on JS. Uh, I think that's because we just need to update our thing. So let's go here and let's run this again. And I don't know if we need to copy this thing every single time, but now let's just move all that back in here. And let's reload that and it should be in the center screen. And if you want to have some spaces, you can do BR or you can do page paragraph break or a regular break and so I don't really know if you guys know HTML but this title was new world game and that's gonna set the title up there and you can use a header uh, h1 there's h1 2 and 3 uh, there might be more but they are the sizes of the header you can just call this world game as well and any other text that you just have will just be displayed as regular text hello world and there it is. This is our game. That's the header. That's the regular text. And we have finished. Um, hopefully this tutorial is useful. Uh, it's probably a little bit long. And I know there's similar tutorials out there making the same game. But I wanted to make a tutorial showing 
how to program in Go, how to set up a project, how to program with Ebiten, and how to display Ebiten on a web browser. So I really hopeful, hope that this was useful for everyone. Um, thanks again for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, uh, feel free to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Feel free to share the video as well with your friends and to like the video. And leave comments on any suggestions, any errors, any things you guys need fixing. Um, if you guys were to use Nginx, I'll show... Um, if you're going to use Nginx, uh, by default, Apache is going to work with WebAssembly. Nginx, you're going to have to change a MIME file for uh, that M-I-M-E um, is what it's going to be called. So if you have Nginx, just look up uh, Nginx M-I-M-E WebAssembly and you should find something showing how to fix that. If And by the chance your Apache doesn't work with WebAssembly, just look up Apache M-I-M-E uh, WebAssembly and you'll find some sort of example of the configuration saying how to do it. So thanks again for watching. My name is Avery and see you guys again next time. Bye.